But again, knowledge is power, right? Isn't that what Q said? Knowledge is power. And I gave you the knowledge of the vaccine exemption laws and how to utilize them and how to exercise that right. Well, here's another one that prevents them from pushing their restrictions. And it's called deprivation of rights under color of law. Section 242 of Title 18 of the U.S. Code makes it a crime for a person acting under color of any law to willfully deprive a person of the right or privilege protected by the Constitution or laws of the United States. That means no governmental authority figure can tell you you don't have a right to breathe fresh air. For the purpose of Section 242, acts under color of law include acts not only done by federal, state, or local officials within their lawful authority, but also acts done beyond the, bu- beyond the bounds of that official's lawful authority. Like the county judge here trying to tell everybody they got to wear face masks to get into court. That's him recommending medical equipment. The judge is now playing a doctor. He's depriving people of their rights to breathe fresh air and, ba- and barring them from entering pu- a public space which they pay for. That is a crime. If the acts are done while the official is purporting to or pretending to act in the performance of his or her official duties, persons acting under color of law within the meaning of this statute include police officers, prison guards, and other law enforcement officials, as well as judges, care providers in public health facilities, and others who are acting as public officials. It is not necessary that the crime and others who are acting as public officials. Officials. It is not necessary that the crime be motivated by animus towards the race, color, religion, sex, handicap, familial status, or national origin or of the victim. So you don't have to prove that the judge is doing it because he's racist. You just have to prove that the judge is doing it and he's doing it outside of law. You just have to prove that the cop is doing it and he's doing it outside of law. And this is a federal law. And this is the law by which you sue your governors. This is the law by which you sue the judges. This is the law by which you sue the police departments. This is the law by which you sue your mayors. Deprivation of rights under color of law. Because as land animals, we have a right to breathe fresh air. And forcing people to wear medical devices is illegal. That determination should be made between the patient and the doctor because politicians do not know your medical condition, cannot assess the medical condition of individuals in the, of all individuals in the public. Thus, an umbrella medical mandate is not legal and lawful because it will lead to people harming themselves like we're witnessing now. The offense is punishable by a range of imprisonment up to a life term or the death penalty depending upon the circumstances of the crime and the resulting injury, if any. So, for example, let's say I try to enter Orange County Courthouse without a mask on because by law, I'm allowed to do that. And that judge cannot sidestep the law and force me to wear a mask. And if the cops decide to arrest me, I can sue every single one of them under this law. If in in the process of arresting me, they cause me physical harm, then... After the lawsuit, I can push for criminal prosecution and then the punishments will be harsher and the fines and the payments and the settlements will be much larger. But again, people don't know the law, so they don't know their rights. And the establishment does not want people to know their rights because if people don't know their rights, it's even easier for the establishment to take them away. If you don't know you have something, how would you know it's being stolen from you? If you don't know that you have a bank account with $10,000 in it, how would you know somebody's pinching money out of it if you don't even know it exists? And that's the game they're playing with us. They're keeping us ignorant of the laws and our own rights so they can then take them away. Like the vaccine exemption laws as an example. People don't know about it. So now the state legislatures are quietly trying to pass laws to get rid of the vaccine exemption laws. But thank God for the people in those governments and those state assemblies that vote no on that crap. Title 18, U.S. Code, Section 242, and this is the actual law itself. Whoever under color of law, whoever under color of any law, statute, ordinance, regulation, or custom willfully subjects any person in any state, territory, commonwealth, possession, or district to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured or protected by the Constitution or laws of the United States shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than one year 
or both. And if bodily injury results from the acts committed in violation of this section, or if such acts include the use, the use, attempted use, or threatened use of a dangerous weapon, explosives, or fire, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years, or both. If death results from the acts committed in violation of this section, or if such acts include kidnapping or an attempt to kidnap, like an illegal arrest, aggravated sexual abuse, or any attempt to commit aggravated sexual abuse, or any attempt to kill, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned for any term of years, or for life, or both, or may be sentenced to death. United States Department of Justice. You see that? And if I'm not mistaken... I believe the United States Department of Justice Authority supersedes any county court in this country because federal law trumps state law and state law trumps county law. There's a hierarchy. But this is the memo that I wanted you guys to see. Memorandum from the Attorney General. Subject, balancing public safety with the preservation of civil rights. Because again, because of public safety, they're trying to take everybody's civil rights away. So A.G. Barr, at the beginning of all this, and he published this thing back in, uh, back in May is when he put this out. The people trying to take your rights away are doing it, saying that it's, a, it's for public safety. It's not for public safety. It's for public tyranny. But this is what it said. Many policies that would be unthinkable in regular times have been commonplace in recent weeks. And we do not want to unduly interfere with the important efforts of state and local officials to protect the public. But the Constitution is not suspended in times of crisis. We must therefore be vigilant to ensure its protections are preserved at the time that the public is protected. I thank you for your attention to this important initiative and for your service to our country. You see that? When he says the Constitution is not suspended in times of crisis, what is the importance of the Constitution? The importance of the Constitution not only outlines what the government can and can't do, thus outlining our rights, but the Constitution also outlines how the system of government is designed to function and the Constitution being the basis for all laws in this country. If the Constitution still stands, even in the time of crisis, that means all laws under the Constitution of this country still stand. That means the laws that protect your civil rights from discrimination, medical discrimination, still stand. That means if you medically cannot wear a mask and you're being prevented from entering a public space, that is a violation of your civil rights. And they're violating the Constitution when the Attorney General himself said that the Constitution is not suspended. And he's right, because the only way the Constitution gets suspended in the time of crisis is under Rex 84, continuity of government, and that takes an act of Congress to vote on it and for the president to sign off on it. But that has never happened yet. That hasn't happened. So the Constitution still stands, and if the Constitution stands, all the laws stand, and if all the law stands, your civil protections stand as well. And this is why people being discriminated against for not wearing masks are winning lawsuits. And winning large, large settlements. A lot of people are actually settling out of court. I don't know if you guys noticed, but a lot of those big box corporations like Walmart and Home Depot that were trying to force mask people, you notice how quick they stopped that shit? And now you can walk in there without a mask? Why? Because they've been sued. But why didn't we hear about these lawsuits? Because they settled out of court so it wouldn't be made public. So the public wouldn't become aware that they can't do this. So they can continue doing it under wraps. So they quietly revise their policy and stop harassing people for not wearing masks for fear of getting hit with another lawsuit and having to settle out of court again. But this memo is the most important piece of literature that you need because this memo right here shows that I'm correct, that the law still stands. They can't take your rights away. And if they try to, you can now sue them in court because thank God that we live in the greatest country in the world where we can actually go to our government to seek redress for our grievance, grievances and do it through the courts. And we have several different levels of court. So if one level is corrupted, you have another chance in another level. 
And I really want to take that deprivation of rights under color of law. And I really want to take this memo down to the courthouse and stand out front and read it out loud to everybody going in and read it to the cops. So they understand what they're engaging in. Because a lot of those men and women are good people. And I don't want to see the hammer come down on them. I really don't. But if they're going to continue to engage in this illegal activity, all I can do is step aside so the hammer don't come down on me while I'm trying to save their dumb asses. But again, that goes back to what I said. Some motherfuckers just need to be shot and they're not going to be shot with guns. They're going to go voluntarily get themselves shot up with the vaccine and rid the world of themselves. Thus, the world becomes a better place. Thus, only the knowledgeable and the wise and the enlightened will remain. So the attorney general doesn't have to put out memos like this to remind people that we still have our damn rights.